ഹബീബുലൂബിന اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه بهذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها تبيلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise and glory belongs to Allah, the creator of this universe. The one who created everything in a manner that it is unique. That none of the things that he has created are the same. every single thing from the grains of sand to all the way to all of the biggest stars in the galaxy they are different even the palms of your hand the fingerprints that you have they're not the same there are 7 billion people that exist in the world today more or less and everyone has a different fingerprint and the 7 billion people that are going to come in the future they all will also have a different fingerprint and the 7 billion people that lived before this 7 billion people they all had a unique fingerprint that every human being that is going to be born on the face of this earth is going to have a different fingerprint when you start looking at that what you see is wisdom in the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because duplication of work is not wisdom duplication of work suggests that the person making those things is limited in knowledge is limited in power that that person duplicating the same thing over and over again does not know how to make something unique and when you look at the whole creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is unique right because he has created everything unique we ourselves also have this sort of instinct that we are unique right even the twins that are born right, that are identical twins even in them there is a difference they're not really identical 100% you know the parents can tell this is jawad and this is hamad right right so when a mother looks says okay this is jawad and this is hamad but if for example if you and i look at them we might say who's jawad and which one is hamad right but the the mother who knows them who loves them who cares for them who has given life to them through her blood because the connection is such that the mother is re- able to recognize that even in the identical twins that who is hamad and who is jawad although they look the same allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created our mother who loves us 70 times more than our mother also never ever is in this confusion although everything might look the same but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that every one that he has created who that being is to us all the stars will maybe look the same but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows knows which star is which right? he knows he knows every single creation of his and he also knows what this creation needs right? 
And before the creation is created, he provides all of the things that this creation is going to need to exist beforehand. Right? That in itself is an amazing idea if you were to think about it. And we'll see, because we want to produce a feeling of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so therefore we're talking about him more so that we can fall in love with him. Once we understand how wise he is, and then the unique part, just keep that in the parking lot and I'll come back to it. Right? In the minds of your parking lot, not parking lot outside. Right? Risk is something that we all understand, right? Risk, if somebody was to, if somebody sustenance, if somebody was to ask you what is risk, you'll say sustenance, right? Sustenance, when somebody says, what comes into our mind is the roti that my mother makes, right? The nice roti on the gas stove that, you know, when she cooks, it just pops up, you know. So, pulkiyan jise kehte, right? Abhi aapko lagate hai book, it has, right? right? So, when she would make those and they would go all the way up, right? Pulkiyan jise kehte hai, and... Then the nice, you know, the salmon that she would make and all the stuff like the biryani and the korma and the nihari and the pie and all this other stuff. When we talk about risk, we say those are risk, right? This comes to our mind. Or we think about clothes, right? Or we think about a house. We think about these things. Sustenance is not just limited to roti kapra pani. It's not limited just to food, clothes, and water, and shelter. With me now? Now I'll give you the definition of risk. Risk is everything that is required for any existence, for any creation to exist. With me? For any of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exist, to sustain what is required is called risk. One of the risks that we are least attentive towards and we never thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that risk is oxygen. Oxygen is risk. When you understand sustenance is something that sustains you, so what more is there to sustain you than oxygen? Right? Can you find a person who can live without oxygen? Maybe you can find a person who can live without water for a few days. You can find somebody who can live without food for a few days. But tell me a person who can live without oxygen for less than 10 minutes. In reality, the actual death when the doctor cannot do anything for you is when the oxygen does not reach your brain. And at that time, this is it. So the last connection that you have between this world and the next world the last connection that gets severed is related to oxygen. When you came into this world, that was the thing that you needed to exist, and that is the last thing that you're going to need from this world. And it is the one thing that you need all the time. When the child comes, if the child does not breathe, does not exist, dies. But in the womb of the mother, we have guilt. Go and look up. We have girls that process oxygen through her blood. She gives to us that life. She sustains us in her womb through her own blood. And when the child comes into this world, the first time we take a breath. And if we don't take that breath, we don't continue. Right? And in order to take that breath, the child has to cry. Right? 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 تو جو لوگ ہمیں آج کہتے ہیں کہ ہم رونے والی قوم ہیں اور اگر رونے سے حیات ملتی ہے تو سب سے حائی سب سے زیادہ حائی زندہ قوم ہم ہی ہیں ٹھیک ہے 
اگر مسکراہٹ سے ملتی ہوتی تو پھر بچے کو پہلے مسکرانا چاہیے تھا لیکن بچہ جب اس دنیا میں آتا ہے تو وہ روتا ہے ٹھیک اور امام حسین کے گریے سے جس چیز کو حیات ملتی ہے وہ آپ کی روح ہے اس آکسیجن سے انسان کی جسم کو حیات ملتی ہے اور امام حسین کے گریا سے آپ کی روح کو حیات ملتی ہے فرام دی آکسیجن وی بریت آور باڈی اسٹیز الائف کنٹینیوس ٹو لیو اینڈ دا ٹیئرز وی شیڈ فار امام حسین صاحب وسلام آور سول بیکمس الائف حضرت عیسیٰ واز دیٹ پروفٹ دیٹ ووڈ برنگ دا ڈیڈ بیک ٹو لائف اینڈ امام حسین صاحب وسلام از دیٹ مسایا از دا ون ہو گیوز لائف ٹو دا سولس آف ہیومن بینگس دیٹ ان ہز مسائب ان ہز ہارڈ شپس When a dead soul cries, it becomes alive. Karbala has the ability to bring the dead souls back to life. So oxygen is something that is sustenance. And it is one of the sustenance that we forget about. The earth you walk on is sustenance. The gravity that you have is sustenance. Imagine if we had no gravity. Yeah, but. You know, if we had no gravity, you would be back in space. You'd be floating out of the atmosphere. You would not be able to live. If gravity was not there, the earth is revolving around the sun. Right? Human beings feel so safe. Yes, they feel so safe. You know how our condition is? We are on a ball of fire that is going around a ball of fire. <laughs> Can you imagine? To sustain seven billion people with all the different creations that he created on the face of this earth, to sustain them that are on a ball of fire and that ball of fire is going around a ball of fire. To sustain them on such a condition. You know when I say ball of fire, this earth that we have, the, the core of it is magma, it's, you know, it's fire. Yes or no? Yeah. So you're actually sitting down on a ball of fire. But this fire that is in the core of the earth, Allah SWT made the earth in a way that it grows beautiful flowers. Can you imagine? A ball of fire and the actual crust of the earth is not that much. That fire does not reach that tiny little seed that is so fragile. And it stays in the womb of the earth and it blossoms in a beautiful flower. Who can do that? On a ball of fire revolving around a ball of fire. Right? So sustenance are the stars, sustenance is the sun, sustenance is the ocean, sustenance is the oxygen, sustenance is every single thing that is required for any creation to exist. So now we understand There can only be one Razek. I don't know. There can only be one Razek. Because the person who's going to sustain everything else should not be the one which anyone else is sustaining. With me. Because anything that is going to sustain the whole of the creation should be independent of something else that is going to sustain it. I don't know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one independent in existence that does not require risk. Someone that does not require risk can only be razik. Someone who requires risk is marzuk. Right? Someone who requires sustenance to exist, in English translated, is the one that needs to be sustained. And someone that needs to be sustained, how can that being sustain others? How can that being sustain others? So in reality, what we need to understand is the more blessings that we count of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now start counting. And this actually was said to us in Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us in Musa, make people fall in love with me. As Musa al-Sallam said, Ya Allah, I love you. But how can I make 
people fall in love with you? And he replied, tell my people, tell my creation to start counting my blessings. So tell them to start counting my blessings. When they start counting my blessings, they will automatically fall in love with me. Because anyone who gives you blessings, you automatically fall in love with that person. Anyone who sustains you, you automatically fall in love with that person. Anyone who gives you something which you need to exist, automatically you are thankful to that person. And who is that person that we love the most? Who is that person that we love the most, that sustains us, that gives us blessings? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the medium of whom? Our mother. With me. Why do I love my why do I love my mother? Because she gave me food. Food kya hai? Blessing hai na? Risk hai na? Hai yani risk hai. Jab main khud se kuch nahi kar sakta tha, kisne meri madad ki? Maani. Hey? تو انسان کو ماں سے کیوں اتنا پیار ہو جاتا ہے وہ اس وجہ سے کہ اس نے تم... جو نعمتیں اس کو دی ہیں اس کے شکر کے نیچے دب کے سب سے زیادہ پیار انسان کو ماں سے ہوتا ہے ہے نا باپ بچارہ کوشن کرتا رہتا ہے لیکن بچے کبھی اس سے اس حد تک پیار نہیں کرتے جیسے وہ ماں سے کرتے اور یہ میرے سے ہمیں ایکسپٹ کر لینا چاہیے ٹھیک ہے کیونکہ ہمارا اپنا رول ہے ہمارا خوف خدا کی تجلی کا رول ہے ماں جو ہے وہ مظہر ہے اس کی محبت کی اس کے عف کی اس کے درگزر کی اس کے معاف کرنے کی اس کے صبر کی ماں وہ ہے باپ کا رول ہوتا ہے خدا کی تجلی کی صفات کی جبر کی صفات ٹھیک ہے جلال کی صفات اور یہ دونوں چیزیں ضروری ہیں محبت سے امید آتی ہے محبت سے امید آتی ہے اور خوف اس امید کو اپنی جگہ پہ رکھتا ہے اگر خوف نہ ہو تو امید جو ہے انسان اس امید سے فائدہ اٹھا کے غلط رستے پہ چلا جاتا ہے لیکن جو خوف ہے اس امید کو اپنی جگہ پہ رکھتی ہے کہ ٹھیک ہے امید ہے لیکن اس سے ناجائز فائدہ نہیں اٹھانا یس دا مدر از دیئر ٹو بی دا سورس آف لو اینڈ مرسی اینڈ فرگیونس اینڈ پیشنس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ اینڈ دا فادر از دیئر ٹو ہیو دیٹ یو نو دیٹ فیئر that is required for a person not to misuse the love that is given to them with me and both of these things are required in today's society where people think they can raise through single parents that's not going to happen that a single parent can raise their children that's not going to happen because both is required That uh, just uh, one person can raise their kids, that's not going to happen. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Single parents? Right? They think that just the father can also play the role of the mother and also the father. The father was never meant for that. The father is not created for that. Give you the example. There's a Civic and there's a 21-wheeler. With me? You have 21-wheelers? We have 16 or 18 there. نارتھ امیرکا کتنے ہوتے ہیں اس کے ویل جو بڑے جو ٹرک ہوتے ہیں سیم ہے سکسٹین ویلر چلو لیٹ سے جسٹ فار دا آرگیومنٹ سیک دیر از اے سکسٹین ویلر اینڈ دیر از اے ہانڈا سیوک یو سین دوز ہانڈا سیوکس آئی نو پیجو سٹروئن اینی کار ایم گوئنگ ٹو نیم از اے اسمال کار ہیئر سو آئی واز سینگ سیوک بیکاز ان نارتھ امیرکا از اے اسمالر کار سو یو ہیو اے اسمال کار اینڈ یو ہیو دس یو اسٹریلر If you were to say that we're going to take the same task as we take from the trailer from the small car, is this justice? Is this justice? 
that the trailer can, you know, take a load of one ton, two tons. So because the trailer can do that, we're going to expect the same thing from a small car. Because both are machines, both have wheels. There's a few slight differences, but they're machines. They use the fuel, they burn it, they run, they have a carburetor, they have a fuel pump, they have a water pump, they have the starter, they have the wheels, they have all of that. So they are equal. And this is the story that is being told by the feminist movement that men are, women are equal. They're not equal in creation, they are equal in soul. They're not equal in creation, just as a 16-wheeler and a small car is not equal by the manufacturer that makes it. And each one of them has been made for a specific purpose. And if the load of the 16-wheeler is put on the small car, it's injustice. And if the load of a small car is put on a 16-wheeler, it's injustice. You say to the 16-wheeler that, you know, a small car does about 22 miles per gallon. You have to do the same. You can't do that. You say a small car can park in this much of a space. You need to park there too. You know, imagine... <laughs> Imagine the 16-wheeler, you parking in front of your parking lot, right? Most of you don't have a parking space. No, 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 you have to park it there. And this is the society we live in where they say the men and women are equal, so therefore the woman can do the task of a man and a man can do the task of the woman. Not possible. And if they do, that is injustice, that's zul. That is going to deteriorate the civic and it's going to deteriorate the 16-wheeler. You take it to the manufacturer, you say, the 16-wheeler is broken. Why? Because it doesn't go, you know, I don't know, 150 miles an hour. It was never meant for that. Right? You with me? And we need to understand that. They put this objection to Islam that we don't consider, you know, the women are oppressed in Islam, the women do not have any rights. For those people, I tell you, go do some research and don't do in the house of Sheikh Google. <laughs> Sheikh Google? Yeah. Don't do the research in the house of Sheikh Google. Go and do research in the city of knowledge. Go do some research in the city of knowledge. Uh, one time I was traveling from Iran to uh, landing in London Heathrow. And I had the whole uniform. Right? This is a uniform. So I wasn't in civilian clothes like yourselves. Right? So I was in my uniform and I come to the immigration officer and he says, where are you coming from? I said, Iran. So what were you doing there? I said, I was there to purify my soul. So, I would say it was a smart Alec answer, but I was already in trouble, right? Wearing the uniform. So I said, I was there to purify my soul. I said, where is that? Where, where were you? I said, in Qom. Then he goes, where is Qom? And the ironic part of this, or the funny part of this, or whichever way you're going to take it, the immigration officer next to him replied that question, answered that question. The immigration officer said to the other immigration officer, you don't know where Qum is? <laughs> he said, you don't know where Qum is? Qum is the city of knowledge. Right? So if you want to know about the rights of women in Islam, you need to go to the city of knowledge and understand. And when you will look through, you will find that Islam gives more rights to women than men. The Islam gives more rights to the women because Islam understands that the woman is the lap where the generations of Muslims are going to grow. She needs to have more rights so that her mind, her soul, her spirit can function in a way that she can Nurture those souls that can grow up with the conviction and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can change humanity all over the world. 
And if that doesn't happen, the society is destroyed. Communities are destroyed. If the lap of mother is not pure, is not holy, is tainted by injustices, this is one of the problems, the biggest problem of the world today. Islam understands that. Right? So, we all want to be unique. Right? Because the whole creation of Allah SWT is unique. Right or no? And we fall in love with things that are unique. With me? So far? We fall in love with things that are unique. And whatever is not unique, we say, I don't want this. I don't know. It's our criteria. But then how many people fall in love with tissue paper? Like, so much tissue paper. Everybody has tissue paper. Right? Actually, the last money that I had, I gave away, but uh, I wish I had a visual for you. If I was to show you, and just imagine I'm showing you a 10 pound bill, okay? Just imagine. Allah SWT gave you the imagination for a reason, okay? So just imagine I'm holding a 10 pound bill, it's also paper, and so is tissue paper. I don't know. So is Kleenex, and so is this. And so is this, right? This is also paper. But why do people fall in love with 10 pounds? I mean, you know, just common sense logic. I mean, they are all papers. This paper also has some ink, and the 10 pounds is going to also have some ink, and the tissue paper is probably blank, right? Nothing. But why is it the human being fall in love with the money? When it's in, in paper, right? Okay, so maybe that example, you, you didn't get close to it, okay. Have you seen people like giving rings with, uh, you know, when they get married, that a person gives the ring and it has a pebble on it? Huh? Like a pebble that you find on the beach, right? You find on the street. Okay, he made a ring, he ring a ring, he made a pebble, and he said, these people. Yeah? He does it like this. He does it like this. He does it like this. Why does the woman doesn't accept that? Because it's not unique. It's a pebble. It's a stone, right? Pebble is a stone. But why is it that she'll fall in love with that person or will think that this person loves her if she gives her a stone that's a bit shiny? A diamond is, what is it? A shiny stone. Why do people not fall in love with pebbles? Why do they fall in love with shiny stones? With me. I mean, it's still a stone. It's just a little bit shiny. And by the way, this is not a diamond. So it's, uh, you know, it's dur in itself, but it's cut in a way that it kind of gives the look of a diamond. Right? Then you have cubic zirconia as well. People don't fall in love with that. Yes or no? Like, they say the symbol of love is diamonds. To show that you love somebody. And, mashallah, our friends are accepting this thing. That my husband, if he loves me, he will take a horse, he will take a horse, he will take a horse, he will take a horse. कि अगर ये लेकर आया तो वो मुझसे प्यार करे और वो कहेंगे कि मेरे लिए लेकर आओ मैं इतनी मेहनत करती हूँ सारा कुछ करती हूँ देखो उसके पास डायमंड की रिंग है मेरे पास नहीं है पीपल स्पेंड टेन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड डॉलर्स अप्रॉक्सिमेटली एज एन एवरेज ऑन अ पीस ऑफ स्टोन दैट इज शाइनी and then they have to pay 29% interest on that 10 to 25,000 dollars 
for majority of their life so that they can show that they love the other person and the other person knows that they love them. A stone. Why is it that people fall in, in love with diamonds and not in pebbles, not with pebbles? Okay, so maybe I'll make the point. I'm still not done yet. For the little brothers of ours, right? Uh, remember when iPhone came out? I don't know if you're old enough to remember. Okay, I think majority of you are old enough to remember. When the first iPhone came out, right? The iPhone 1, or uh, what was it called? I forgot now. Right? The first iPhone when it came out, and you took it out of your pocket, it's like, whoa, this guy has an iPhone. I don't know. This guy has an iPhone, right? Now if you take it out, what happens? <laughs> it's like, what is that? It's the first generation. Nobody has that. Nobody wants that. But if you take out a Note 4, so what's the difference? That is old, and this is new. People fall in love with Actually, they fall in love with old and new. Right? They fall in love with old because it is unique. Yes? They fall in love with old because it's an antique, it's unique. And they fall in love with new because it's new. With me so far? Acha, Chalampir, Xbox One, Wii U. You guys get this in England yet? We you? Okay. So, the point that I'm trying to make is whatever is going to be unique, we're going to fall in love with. Yes or no? This is understood so far? So, whatever is unique, because diamonds, if everybody had diamonds, nobody would fall in love with diamonds. They would have the same value as a pebble. Yes or no? If everybody had diamonds in their backyard, that if you were to take the dirt out, and you would see diamonds there, nobody would fall in love with diamonds, and diamonds would not be so pricey. The reason why they are so pricey is because they are unique. Not everybody has it. Money, the reason why people fall in love with it, because not everybody has money. Right? And the new technology they fall in love with is because they want to be the first one to have it, because nobody else has it. Right? Okay, now... Come back from wherever you were. Now, here's the point. What's the most unique thing in this universe? Name me the most unique thing in this universe. There is only one. Laysa kamithlihi. Laysa kamithlihi shay. Wahdahu. La sharika la. The, the one thing that is the unique and it is only one and nothing else is like it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're going to fall in love with something which is unique and something which is precious, then what is more precious than Allah? What is more unique than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nothing. So the rest of the things become nothing. The rest of the things become nothing. And the only thing that a person, if it is that we, I and you, fall in love with something which is unique and precious that nobody else has, and nothing is like it, then the only thing in this universe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest, if you fall in love with anything else, somebody else probably has it. No matter how big of a diamond that you're going to buy, somebody else probably has a bigger diamond. No matter how much money you're going to get, somebody is probably there who has more money than you. So if it is something unique that we fall in love with, then forget the rest. Forget the rest. Just fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No? 
So there's another concept I wanted to discuss. I'm not sure if we have the time, but if you can recite it loud, salawat, we'll see. I was at a place, um, just when I see you guys a little bit more tense, I just give you a little bit of story so that it's more relaxing, right? I was at a place and um, one of the youths, he came up to me and he said, Ah, sir, um, you know that we don't have a lot of people in your mind. A little bit on a light, you know. I said, no, I don't know if there's any problem. آپ نہیں مارتے تو مجھے کوئی ایشو نہیں ہے تو کہنے لگے کہ آپ صاحب ہم نعرہ اس لیے نہیں مارتے کیونکہ نعرہ مارتے ہیں تو ہماری توجہ بٹھ جاتی ہے تو ہم آپ کو غور سے سننا چاہتے ہیں اس لیے ہم نعرہ نہیں مانتے ہیں اس لیے کہ you know we listen to you very very quietly because if we say something or we recite the salawat or you know we do نعرہ حیدری then we lose our concentration so therefore we don't say anything so don't take any offense to it I'm like I didn't take any offense <laughs> and actually sometimes our criteria becomes that, that you know, if there's a lot of people who show up when a speaker is there, that it is a successful majlis, right? Or if in the majlis, you know, a lot of people are very much excited, then it is a successful majlis. Or that after the majlis, if there was you know, niyaz that was distributed, that was really, really good food, that that majlis is successful. But in reality is, the majlis is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way it becomes successful is that whoever participates in this worship, if they get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is successful. But if they do not get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that majlis is not really successful, right? When the fazail of Imam Ali والسلام, are recited, if with those fazails people get close to Imam Ali والسلام, it's a successful majlis. And the fazail of Imam Ali والسلام, if we need to understand it, we haven't understood even one, and even in like quark is the smallest particle they have discovered. Quark is the smallest particle they have discovered. And we haven't even understood the fazail of Imam Ali والسلام, as a cork. Although we have been listening to the fazail all of our lives, but we haven't even understood an atom worth of it. Because it shows to us. <coughs> it shows that if we had understood the fazail of Imam Ali والسلام, and the amount of what we had understood, it would have shown in our character. He would have shown in our actions. Then when you hear that Imam Ali was shuja, he was brave. Right? And we are still not brave. What does that mean? What does that mean? Imam Ali was brave. He was haider. Right? I'll give you a, another thing about the nara. I've explained that in a few places, but I'll tell you. And if somebody was to ask you, and, and, and it's, this is a question more for the elders, but I'll say it in English and then I'll say it in Urdu. If somebody was to ask you, what is the meaning of Nara Hadri? If someone asks you, what is the meaning of Hadri? Then someone will tell you, what is the meaning of Hadri? Yes? Yes, for example, Nara says that you are in a high voice, so you don't have to be like that in your voice. نعرہ یعنی اونچی آواز میں حیدر بہادر حیدری بہادری اونچی آواز سے اونچی آواز سے جو پیکر ہے بہادری کا اس کا نام لو نعرہ حیدری اور پھر ہمارے رسپانس کی ہوتا ہے یا علی اس کے بعد افیک کیا ہونا چاہیے تھا ہمارے اندر افیک کیا ہونا چاہیے تھا کہ ہمیں بہادر بن جانا چاہیے نعرہ حیدری یا علی تو بہادری کا نعرہ علی کا نام علی بہادری کا پیکر اب جو شخص علی علی پوری زندگی کرتا رہے اور ابھی تک بہادر نہ بنا ہو 
اس نے ابھی تک علی کا نام ہی نہیں لیا جس دن علی کا نام معرفت سے لے لے گا نا اس دن وہ شجاع بن جائے گا اور شجاع کون ہوتا ہے یہ بھی بتا دے شجاع کون ہوتا ہے اسلام کی نگاہ میں رسول کی نگاہ میں خدا کی نگاہ میں شجاع وہ شخص ہے جو کسی اور کی عبادت نہ کرے سوائے خدا کی شجاع کون ہے اس لیے امام علی شجاع ہیں کہ آپ پوری زندگی اٹھا کے دیکھ لیں اگر کسی اور کی عبادت کی ہو امام علی کی پوری زندگی اٹھا کے دیکھ لیں کہ اگر کسی اور کی اطاعت کی ہو امام علی علیہ السلام کی پوری زندگی اٹھا کے دیکھ لیں کہ اگر انہوں نے کسی اور کے دین پر عمل کیا ہو سوائے اللہ کے تو امام علی شجاع ہیں کیونکہ وہ خدا کے عبد ہیں جو عبد خدا ہوتا ہے وہ شجاع ہوتا ہے اور جو عبد خدا نہیں ہے وہ بزدل ہے جو عبد خدا نہیں ہے وہ بزدل ہے اور ان کے دشمن عبد خدا نہیں تھے وہ عبد شہوات تھے وہ عبد دنیا تھے ان کے دلوں میں دنیا کی چمک دمک تھی دنیا ان کا خدا تھا دنیا ان کی خدا تھی شہوات ان کی خدا تھی یہ سب چیزیں ان کی خدا تھی اس لیے وہ بزدل تھے جب امام علی کے سامنے آتے تھے لرزنے لگ جاتے تھے کیونکہ انہیں پتہ ہوتا کہ علی کے سامنے آ گئے یہ عبد خدا ہے اس کے پاس جو طاقت اس کے بازوؤں میں وہ اس کے ایمان کی ہے ہمارے بازوؤں میں طاقت اپنی ہے اس کے بازوؤں میں طاقت ایمان کی ہے اور ایمان کی طاقت کے سامنے ہمارے بازو کی طاقت ٹھہر نہیں سکتی سمبری آسٹ امام علی ہاؤ ڈی چو لفٹ دا ڈور آف خیبر خیبر کے در کو آپ نے کیسے اٹھا لیا اس نے یہ کیوں سوال پوچھا اس نے امام علی کی غزا دیکھی اس نے امام علی کی غزا دیکھی کہ جو کہ روٹی سوکھی ہوئی پانی میں جو روٹی ہاتھ سے نہیں ٹوٹتی تھی اس کو گھٹنے پہ رہ کے توڑنا پڑتا تھا اور امام علی اس جب وہ کھانا ان کا جو ہوتا تھا جب وہ جاتے تھے تو کھانے کو بند کر دیتے تھے کپڑے میں رکھ کے نا جو کی روٹی کو بند کر دیتے تھے اور بہت زور سے گرا لگا دیتے تھے تاکہ کوئی کھول کے اس کو کسی اور چیز سے بدل نہ سکے کیا لی کے غذا ایک جو کی روٹی سوکھی جو کی روٹی پانی کے ساتھ ٹھیک خود کہتے ہیں کہ میں اپنے آپ کو اتنی بھوک لگا لیتا ہوں کہ مجھے جو کی روٹی میں بھی مزہ آتا ہے کہ میں اتنی اپنے آپ کو بھوک لگا لیتا ہوں کہ حتیٰ جو کی سوکھی روٹی پانی میں بھگو کے بھی مجھے مزہ آتا ہے میں خدا کا شکر ادا کر اس لیے لوگوں کو امام علی کا دستخان پسند نہیں تھا تو جو ان کو پسند تھا وہ ان کے دشمنوں کا دستخان تھا تو جب امام علی کی غزا کو دیکھا اس شخص نے تو اس نے پوچھا کہ آپ نے در خیبر کو کیسے اٹھا لیا تو مولا نے کہا کہ میں نے در خیبر کو بازو کی طاقت سے نہیں بلکہ اپنی ایمان کی طاقت سے اٹھا لیا آئی لفٹ دا ڈور آف خیبر ناٹ وتھ دا پاور ان مائی آرم بٹ دا پاور آف مائی فیتھ اینڈ مائی کنوکشن So, in regards to that, you have to understand that all of the fazail of Imam Ali alayhi wasalam, they stem from this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He lifted the door of Khaybar because he was in love with Allah. And he helped the Holy Prophet in every single thing that was required for Islam to be saved for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of his bravery was because he was in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are in love with Allah, you become brave. And when you become in love with the world, you become a coward. And a coward cannot do anything. A coward cannot protect his own. 
A coward can only cry tears of remorse by looking at the news and seeing his brothers and sisters dying. A coward can only just have, you know, remorse inside of their hearts and they don't do nothing. But a brave person stands up against any oppression. A brave person stands up against any oppression. A brave person stands against its own self. Zalam to nafsi. Even the own lowly desires that are oppressing their person's soul, a brave person stands and says, No. A person who says no to their lowly desires is a brave person. A person who submits to their lowly desires is a coward. That is how you become brave. Is by submitting to his will. Okay? So, abhi tak humne Imam Ali ala sallatu wasalam ki fazail ko humne suna hai. Abhi samjha nahi hai. Jab samaj jayenge, jab samaj jayenge, ab yakin kare, humari dunya badal jayenge. ہماری پوری دنیا بدل جائے گی اور ایک شخص کافی ہوگا دنیا کو بدلنے کی ایک شخص one man will change the whole world one man a 70 year old old man a 70 year old old man stood by himself with the strength of Allah who understood the fazail of Imam Ali. That one man who stood against his lowly desires took down the oppressor inside and placed the government of Allah on his soul. When he was asked, where did you get all of this? He said, Mahamechi's darim as Karbala darim. Somebody asked him, where did you get all of this? And he said, all that we have is from Karbala. All that we have is from Karbala. Our emotions, our ability to sacrifice, we learn from Karbala. This that we were able to take the oppressor out of our country is the tears we cried for the sake of Imam Hussain that taught us to take the oppressor out. It was Imam Hussain that taught us that a person like me cannot do pay allegiance to a person like Yazid. It was Imam Hussain that showed me the Yazid of the time. It was Imam Hussain that told me that the government of Allah should be on your nafs first. Because he was Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alaika, ya Aba Abdullah. O peace and blessings be upon you, the father of slavery of Allah. Imam Hussain did not have a son called Abdullah. It is called, Imam Hussain is called Aba Abdullah because of the sincerity of submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. So, this is the junction we stand. This is the place where we stand. When you look at the bravery of Imam Hussain, it's amazing. Amazing bravery Imam Hussain had. He had the enemy where he was thirst. The enemy was heat. The enemy was the disappointment of the people who called. The thoughts of those individuals who did not 
fulfill the promise that they had made. The enemy was the lowly desires. The enemy was the love of the world. The enemy were those people who were arrogant and jealous. With all of those enemies, Imam Hussein fought bravely. Amazing. If you were to go to Karbala and see Imam Hussein when he was standing, he was standing in the battlefield of Karbala with his hair, with the dirt of Karbala in his hair, right? with his back bent a bit because of Azat Abbas. Because of Azat Abbas, his back was broken, so he was bent a little bit. His clothes showed the signs of someone who had been lifting bodies all day. Somewhere on his clothes was the blood of Azat al Akbar. <laughs> of course, there's going to be blood on the clothes. When you take the spear out of the chest of your young son, when you take the spear out from the chest of Azat al Akbar, there is blood that's going to come up. <laughs> He had blood around here, the blood of Hazrat al Yasgar. When Hazrat al Yasgar was his, in his arms, when he was moving as if a fish moves out of water, where the blood was going, was coming out of his neck, and he wanted to put it on the earth, the earth said, if this blood falls on me, I will never give any life out of it. The sky said, I will never rain. The only place this blood that could exist was the face of Imam Hussain. Then, of course, when you put the blood on your face, it drips from your beard onto your clothes. When you put the head of Azat Abbas in your lap, <laughs> Imam ki god, me ha jab Azat Abbas ka sar tha, aur teer aank me laga hua tha. Jab Azat Abbas gire hain, gurj jab laga, ne kajib, uski tashbih di jati hai, Azat Abbas ke سواری سے گرنے کی تشبیح دی جاتی ہے بی بی زینب کے بندے ہوئے ہاتھوں کے ساتھ کہ جب حضرت عباس گرے ہیں شان قلم ہو چکے جب انسان ایک اونچی جگہ سے گرتا ہے تو وہ اپنے ہاتھوں سے اپنے چہرے کو بچاتا ہے آپ تصور نہیں لاسکتے کہ جس کے شان قلم ہوئے چکے ہو جس کے بازو نہ ہو وہ سواری سے گرے اور جس کی آنکھ میں تیر ہو تصبر نہیں کر سکتے کہ جس کے سر پہ گرز مارا گیا ہو جس کی ساری امیدوں کو توڑ دیا گیا ہو اس تیر نے جو مشکیزہ بھی بھی سکینہ میں لگا ہو اور وہ سواری سے گرے امام حسین کی گود میں حضرت عباس کے خون کے نشان سے حضرت عباس کی سر کو جب اپنی گود میں رکھا تو حضرت عباس سر اٹھا دیتے تھے گرا دیتے تھے اپنے سر گرا دیتے تھے امام حسین نے پوچھا عباس یہ کیوں حضرت عباس کہنے لگے مولا مجھے وہ وقت یاد آ رہا ہے کہ آپ میدان کربلا میں تنہا ہوں گے کوئی نہیں ہوگا جس کی گود میں آپ کا سر ہوگا مجھے گوارا نہیں ہے کہ میرا مولا کاش کہ آپ 
کے ذہنوں کے اندر وہ تصور آ جائے کہ کس طرح سے امام حسین تنہا تھے تنہا کربلا کے میدان میں کھڑے سزا لگاتے ہیں کہ کوئی ہے جو میری مدد کرے کوئی ہے جو میری مدد کرے ہم میں سے کون ہے جو ان کی مدد کرے کاش کہ ہم ادھر ہوتے ہم کہتے ہیں زیارتوں میں کہتے ہیں کہ کاش کہ ہم ادھر ہوتے آپ کی مدد کرتے تاکہ ہم بھی فلا پا جاتے ہم بھی جیت جاتے کاش ہم بھی جیت جاتے میرے مولا ہم نہیں تھے جو تو باچے بھی بھی سکینہ کے چیر کاش کے باہ پہ ہمارا چہرہ ہوتا کہ وہ تماشا آپ کی چھ سال کی بچی کے موں پہ نہ پڑتا کاش کہ وہ ہماری ماں کے بازو ہوتے جس میں رسل باندھی جاتے وہ بھی وہ بھی بھی زینب کے بازو نہ ہوتے کاش کہ وہ ہمارے باپ کی قبر ہوتی جس پہ تازیا نے مارے جاتے امام سجاد کی نہ ہوتی بے ابھی انسا وہ امی میرے ماں باپ آپ پہ قربان ہو امام سجاد کاش کہ وہ ہمارا چھ ماں کا بچہ ہوتا جس کے گلے پہ ہر بلا کا تیر لگتا کاش کہ وہ ہمارا اٹھارہ سال کا بیٹا ہوتا جس کے سینے میں پرچی لگتی ہمارے بچے جوان ہو جاتے ہیں ہماری چھوٹی چھوٹی بچی ہو گئے اگر کوئی یتیم ہو جاتا ہے ان کے سر پہ شفقت کا ہاتھ پھیڑنے والا ہوتا ہے خدایا میں توفیق دے دے خدایا میں توفیق دے دے کہ جب وہ حسین وقت آئے جس کا ہمیں انتظار ہے خدایا میں توفیق دے دے کہ اگر اس کی طرف کوئی تیر آئے تو سب سے پہلے ہمارا سینہ ہو اگر کوئی تلوار ہے سب سے پہلے ہماری گردن ہو اگر اس کو قربانی کی ضرورت ہو تو ہمارے بچے قربان ہو ہماری ماں قربان ہو ہمارے باپ قربان ہو لیکن وہ حسین وقت اس کو ایک آنچ نہ آئے وہ تین دنوں کا پیسہ نہ خدا ہے ہمارے گناہوں کو معاف کر دے امام کے ظہر میں تاجیل کر دے ہمارے میں حسین